This is the start of a new series driven by the viewers on this channel and the guys on Discord. What if we were to take a world club? What if we had to analyze that squad and come up with a specific tactic for the team? What if we needed to make changes to the tactic across a match? Um, if certain things happen, how would we react? Yes, a lot of what if questions. So we decided to come up with a limited series for as many clubs as we can cover. Your input will be greatly appreciated. Do you like the show? Do you want to see a club specifically covered? Let me know in the comments below. Once again, if you do like these kind of shows, please hit the like and the subscribe button. And I want to thank everybody for continuing to support this channel in one way or another. Whether you just view the shows, like the shows, or even support me on Patreon or subscribe to this channel. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. Don't forget, if you want to just catch up with me streaming three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, please feel free to come to Dalgis Moments. That's a channel over on YouTube that I stream on. And we also do um, draft modes, yes, on Tuesdays and Saturdays, 2 p.m. UK time. It's open to the public. Don't be shy. Without further ado, let's head to the Bundesliga, Bayer Leverkusen. This club's culture is pretty straightforward. It's very common in a lot of saves. Sign young players and don't sign old players. They expect you to qualify for the Champions League in the very first season. A thing I like to do at the start of every save is, you know, take over hiring and firing of staff. Once I've hired the core group of staff members, then contract renewals are left to the director of football. At that point, I usually delegate that responsibility. We're going to handle the touchline instructions ourselves. Over here, first team player availability, I will automatically, when first team players have a need for match sharpness or are not picked in a match squad, they will automatically make the unfit first team players available for the reserves. This is something I want to do. We have room to sign three more coaches and three performance analysts. So I'm, if I'm looking at my staff, yeah, we need one defending, one attacking, one possession, or we need to get one more goalkeeping coach. I'm not a big fan of hiring too many goalkeeping coaches. I rather, you know, we'd rather go purchase goalkeeping coaches, get more bang for buck by training the rest of the team instead of just looking to, you know, get fantastic development for my goalkeepers. <laughs> These are the youth training schedules I'll be using. This is the balanced early season youth training schedule. We're going to use this until they gain tactical familiarity. It's pretty aggressive, but only on Mondays. So we got physical, overall, attacking, movement, possession, tactical, teamwork, match practice, defensive, shit, goalkeeping, attacking, defending, two um, sessions where they work on set pieces. Um, and of course, they will be playing a match on this day. The reason why we have one match practice is because we need to work on their roles. I also have got all these uh, defensive shape, attacking shape, also work on their roles. Teamwork, I'm going to leave this in for the youth team because I want the teamwork attribute to go up. And this specifically works on the attribute for teamwork and it works for all the players in the team. It's something that I want to, I want to focus on as well with the youth team. Goalkeeping is also here because, of course, you know... Um, we do want the goalkeepers to develop slightly. Once they have gained tactical familiarity, we switch to a session which actually has two match practices in there. Match practice is actually very handy for youth players because they, they're still learning their roles, right? You need something that drives attributes in the direction of their roles. And this is a fantastic session that does that. Um, we're going to have match practice. Teamwork is going to be embedded inside this schedule as well because the, of the teamwork attribute we're after. Now, then we've got the rest of the uh, sessions. Now, these are fairly balanced. They'll cover the all the attributes needed for the whole team. Again, we've got match practice here, attacking movement, defensive shape, and match preview. Now, attacking movement and defensive shape are upcoming match bonuses. Of course, these are in there, my favorites, because of the fact that they also work on um, individual roles. Finally, we've got the youth playmaking schedule. This is specifically for players in the defensive unit who need to develop passing decisions, vision, and flair. We'll do the training team schedules first for the youth and the senior teams. 
And then we're going to analyze the squad. Once we finish analyzing the squad and we know what tactic we're going to be playing, then we will go to each individual player and assign them a specific role to train in. Pasting the schedules is really easy. It's just a matter of copy and paste. We'll just do balance early season all the way until um, November. Then when, once we hit November, we'll use the complete training schedule all the way. And we will also include the playmaking schedule for the senior team. We'll put it in twice a month. At most, it will be twice a month, minimum once a month. And then we'll mix and match a complete training schedule with the playmaking schedule all the way until April. We'll do the same thing with the youth. We'll just go to the calendar. In the case of the youth, they have their own youth sessions, right? Which have two match practices. So we'll get the balance early. Uh, we'll get the youth balance early season. We'll stick it in. And then when, once we get to um, October or November, we'll switch to the youth complete schedule. <laughs> With the youth team, we'll start with the balance early season all the way until about September or October. And then we'll start at including the youth complete schedules. Um, where possible, I will be paying attention to things that happen like this. Here we got Schalke and then we got match practice, something that I don't want to see. So we'll just remove this, have a recovery. And this could lead to a lot of um, injuries. So we'll make sure that the boys don't end up in such a position. We will have like match review where possible so that they learn their tactics quickly. I'll just copy this and make sure that um, we paste it across so that we don't end up in a situation where the players get injured. There are two things that actually happen at the start of the save. They give you a little introduction to the club and the second thing they ask you to do is create a tactic. It's like a bit odd that the second thing is creating a tactic even before you've gotten to know your squad. So I usually have a placeholder tactic there just to take up the space until I finished everything else. Then I return to creating a tactic. The game is usually going to recommend three different tactical styles. It usually does this for a reason. The first tactical style is control possession. It recommends a 4-2-3-1 DM as you can see over here. The second tactical style is again pressing with a 4-3-3 DM system. And finally, the fluid counter attack also has a 4-3-3 DM system. To find out why the game recommended those three tactical styles, we'll need to analyze the squad. So what I'm gonna do right at the start is I'm gonna import one of my views that helps me analyze squads. It's a Gigan DNA view. I will be able to tell whether my team has got the quality to, you know, press for 90 minutes of a game. Just taking a look at the squad, the first thing I notice is all in red right at the bottom. We've got some serious injuries in the squad. Um, some of their best players are out for at least two months. In this case, three to four months for their starting defender. One of their best uh, midfielders is out for six to seven months. And another one here is out for four to five months. So the very first news we get is bad. I like to start every analysis with midfield and we look at this midfield team, we'll understand why the AI said the 4-2-3-1 and the 4-3-3 are our best options. There are some players away on holiday. Here we've got Charles Arangui. He's, uh, his mentals are superb. This is one player that can play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Positioning, tackling is fairly decent. Passing, he's got passing, he's got vision, he's got decisions. Okay, he can play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He can play as a regular central midfielder on support or a carrier. There are quite a few roles that he can play. Then uh, we've also got Exequel Palacios, another excellent option. He's cut as a playmaker. He's got passing, he's got vision, he's got decisions. He's got some flair. Uh, he won't lose the ball so easily. He's a bit aggressive in the challenge as well. So in terms of the roles he can play, ball winning midfielder, Mazala, box to box midfielder, central midfielder on support. So yeah, we've got two solid options in central midfield. We've got Robert Andrick here as well. Uh, aggressive. It's a team that's got some aggression in them. So we can expect uh, some steal in midfield. Uh, passing, vision, decisions. This guy's pretty average. He won't, he won't create anything you know he doesn't have the eye to unlock passes he's got solid mentals that um he, not a lot of players are going to get past him right so he is a tireless midfielder uh he's a ball winner he can play as a carrello 
he's an excellent option if you wanted to have someone play as a defensive midfielder because he's also got jumping reach. So he's going to be a player that we can rely on to win the ball in midfield if needed. So if we created a 4-2-3-1, he'd be one of the central midfielders. If we have a 4-3-3 DM, he can play as a defensive midfielder as well. So there are there's, there are good reasons as to why this uh, the algorithm in the game suggested playing with a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. Finally, we've got a very solid uh, set-piece master here in the form of Karim Demerbe. His attributes are, have, I think in some sense, they've been downgraded slightly for FM22. His mentals have dropped somewhat. He's, he's pretty solid at keeping the ball. He's got very good composure. He's got agility. He's got a good first touch. He's good at passing the ball and he's got fantastic flair. This is one player, if we wanted to use him, we'd probably use him as a central midfielder on attack because he also has long shots. He's got pretty decent finishing, so he can get into the opposition areas and be a nuisance with his long shots. He can score goals. I would play him either as a Mazala or a central midfielder. So this is a very good player because we need a player that is also fantastic at set pieces and he could be a starting player in this team. We've analyzed our midfielders. Now it's time to look at our defenders. Now, the first thing that stands out when I have this uh, view up is natural fitness. Is There are two players with low natural fitness, both the fullbacks, and we only have a few fullbacks. We got one injured, uh, Timothy Fosu Mensa. Looking at him, concentration, composure, decision-making, low technique, uh, work rate 12. This is also one player that will make quite a few mistakes at the back. Um, when he comes back, he still needs to work on developing those weak attributes. Uh, we also have an issue here with another of the starting fullbacks here. He's not at altogether very fast. His concentration is a bit low. His decision making is also quite poor. This is another player that we have to worry about. Uh, we, when it comes to his training, we're going to have to make sure that those attributes are worked on. Um, then we're looking at starting defenders, Jonathan Ta, he's okay. Uh, concentration also so a bit low. Uh, then we've got Pio Hinchkape, again, another player whose mentals need a lot of work. So these are, when it comes to training these players, we're going to have to focus on concentration, anticipation as one of some of the attributes of priority across the back line. We know this team has got some solid midfielders. We've got a defense that needs a bit of help. So let's try and decide between the 4 2 3 1 and the 4 3 3. We need to make a decision. So, if we're going to use Karim Demerbe in our team and we've got a defense that needs help, it's obvious we can only play with a 4 3 3 DM at the moment. We've got Kosuno and Ta. We can abuse Red Source in this position as an inverter wing back. He's going to work on concentration decisions in training. We've got Mitchell Baker. Another player is going to have to work on his mentals in training, as you can see. They've all, be, they've all been set the proper training schedules where they are going to be working on concentration, even decisions and off the ball. Then we've got, looks like we're going to start with Arangui here as a box-to-box -box midfielder. This position will be Arangui and uh, Palacios. Then uh, Sheik is going to be used as a pressing forward attack. This guy is going to be moving into channels. Uh, what I like is if you use Diaby out on the right, we can play him as a, as a left-footed winger, which means that he's going to come inside. He's going to play one twos with our Kareem Demerbe, or I can use him as an inside forward on support. But then we got this inverted wing back coming in this way, Kareem Demerbe attacking the box this way. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure from, that we apply to teams down the right flank. We got Jonathan Ta over here. And on the other flank, we're also going to use an inside forward here in the form of Paulinho. In fact, for this team, we've got quite a few players that can play on the right as, uh, as inside forwards. We'll be able to play with uh, Paulinho, Florian Wurz, Nadim Amiri. All of them can play as inside forwards on the right flank. I mean, unfortunately, for some of these players, they will have to develop their attributes along the way. In the case of Florian Wurz, uh, he's already familiar with this position. What we'll do in terms of training is we move him here and then we start working on him as an inside forward and attack. At least now we know what we want him to do. We have enough cover, but the only issue right now is the right back's position. The problem with the right back's position is that we have a long-term injury to one of our defenders, which means that we currently have to go out and actually look 
for getting a player in on loan as a right back. So in terms of the team instructions, I'm probably going to be playing out of possession, something like this. Prevent short goalkeeper, trigger press, more of a standard defensive line, much higher line of engagement. Uh, then counter press, counter with these goalkeeper distribution instructions. This counter press will work very well with this narrow width because I'm looking to play narrow, right? Um, and then what we'll do high up the pitch here is probably tell these guys to stay wider. Right. So here in this particular case, I want him to do one twos with this player, so he's not going to be told to stay wider. Uh, the DMs, box to box, and CM on attack, more direct, more risk, and triple less. Inverted wing backs have been told to stay in this position. So uh, then the back line is a central defender, central defender, inverted wing back, and a wing back. We might have an issue in the right back department because uh, Jeremy Frimpong is going to have to be trained to work on his uh, weaker foot because he's there's a strong possibility he's going to lose the ball. I'm not sure if we want to use him as an inverted wing back just yet because uh, he's still very weak in certain areas. He's pretty good going forward, uh, taking on players as a regular winger. Um, he's got runs with ball, gets ball whenever possible, knocks the ball past the podium. So I'm probably going to just train him as a winger at the moment. So winger on attack. Uh, no. Then his other attributes don't improve. So we're going to switch back to... <laughs> Uh, inverted wing back on attack. Yeah, then he's, these are these attributes will improve. Okay, this means that we have a slight problem. We don't have cover for right back, which means that we have to set up a scouting next. We're gonna set up determination, natural fitness. Age is between fifteen to about twenty-one. Uh, scouting potential is going to be at least good. Scouting is going to be set to ongoing and we're going to set it up with regions. Our first region is South America. So by the time I finish my assignments, we'll have scouts uh, scouring South America, North and South. All the setups are the same, specifying the attribute values for 12 and 10. Ages between 15 and 25. Scouting potential is going to be good and it's going to be ongoing. So the scouts will be based there all the way. Eastern Europe... Central America, Central Europe, Central Africa, Western Europe, Northern Europe, North Africa, UK and Ireland, North America. One scout is going to be free in case I need to scout any potential targets. The transfer budget for this club is about 6.8 million. I do plan to get somebody to cover for the right back's position and for central defense. So we'll probably go and try and get some loan signings and bring them to the club. As far as training is concerned for the rest of the team, we'll just train them in their roles and that includes the youth team as well. Well, that's it for the first episode of What If we Take an Over at Bayer Leverkusen. On the next episode, we're going to do a deeper dive into their performances. We're going to take a look at the tactic itself. We're going to yeah, evaluate how we've done. And then along the way, we're going to start talking about how we need to adapt in certain games. I hope you enjoyed today's show and found it useful. If you like the show, or if you have any other clubs you want me to feature next, please let me know in the comments below. Meanwhile, you guys stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.